students we are going to see the next step in the recombinant dna technology that is about insertion of recombinant dna into the host and obtaining a foreign gene product here we have already learned how gene of interest is amplified or produced in many copies by using pcr technique so you can see here how gene of interest is produced in n numbers by using pcr once the gene of interest is amplified it is ligated with the vector you can see here and this in turn is inserted into the host for further cloning through various techniques the first host cell is made competent now once the ligated dna is introduced into the host cell host becomes genetically modified cell that is the behavior of the host organism changes let us understand this with an example for example the target gene is ampicillin resistance gene with so this ampicillin resistant gene along with the vector is inserted into the host e coli cells on doing so e coli becomes resistant to ampicillin and when they are transferred to culture plate that contains ampicillin as a medium only e coli cells that are resistant to ampicillin will grow and we can easily use this method to identify which cells are recombinant so re hence this ampicillin resistant gene has made us easy to identify recombinant from that of the non recombinant so the gene that help us in easy identification of recombinant cell is called a selectable marker now once the gene is inserted into the host cell it starts expressing itself in the host cell that is it is synthesizing the desired protein such proteins that are formed from recombinant dna are called as recombinant proteins now students this protein has to produce in large quantities so now let us see the next step in recombinant dna technology that is to obtain foreign product in huge quantity recombinant dna can either be grown in small scale in laboratory or can be multiplied on large scale in continuous culture in continuous culture or large scale production of product used medium is drained from one side and fresh medium is added from another side continuously to produce large quantities of desired cell large vessels are used so that specific products are produced in large volume these large vessels are called as bioreactors a bioreactor provides the optimal condition for achieving desired product the commonly used bioreactor is a stirred tank bioreactor let us look at the construction of this reactor a stirred tank bioreactor is usually cylindrical you can see here with a curved base the curved base helps in mixing of the reactor content the stirrer helps in mixing the content as well as providing the needed oxygen the reactor consists of an agitator system to mix the content and oxygen delivery system to supply the oxygen it has foam control system temperature control system a ph control system and a sampling vessel to withdraw the product periodically once the bioreactor has produced enough product it is collected and reactor and that product is used for separation and purification so the process of separation and purification of that biosynthetic product is downstreaming process hence the downstreaming process is the last step in genetic engineering after the formation of biosynthetic product it is subjected to a series of process before it is ready for marketing as a finished product further the product is formulated with suitable 
preservatives too so that it can be stored for a longer period this is about the entire process of genetic engineering thank you students